Namaste, everyone, and welcome back to my channel. Thank you for tuning back in. Today, I have the pleasure and the honor to host a very special someone, and I'll tell you why I say special in just a bit. But first, I'd like to welcome him. Namaste, Mabajibdi, and uh, welcome to my channel. Thank you for taking time out of your schedule to do this video with me. Thank you. Thank you so much, madam. It's my pleasure to be here in your channel. All right. Wonderful. And um, so I say special because uh, you're somebody who um, I learn a lot from and that I get a lot of uh, inspiration from. And just to give the viewers a little bit of introduction about you, I'm going to say a few words about you. Um, so Baba Didi is a um, Google Cloud engineer by profession but has over 20 years of experience in modern age spirituality and astrology. His dream is to rekindle and revive the um, lost wisdom of ancient scriptures and to share that um, wisdom with everyone, that timeless wisdom with everybody. Um, he has a YouTube channel called Exotic Astrology. I'll put the link to that in the description box below. You all must visit his channel and uh, check out all his videos. That's where I learn everything from. <laughs> and, um, and his videos are mostly about spirituality, about self-development and astrology. Uh, he currently lives in Germany, where he has done his master's in IT and currently works in a firm there but is originally from Assam in India. So once again, very, very warm welcome. Thank and you, thank very... you once again. <laughs> and we're going to dive into the subject. So we're going to yes. speak about spirituality today. Uh, and the first question is going to simply be, what is spirituality to you after all the experience that you have accumulated through the years and cultivated? Um, what is spirituality and also, you know, when I watch your videos, I see a lot of times you chant um, mantras, shlokas, verses from, uh, from scriptures, such as the Bhagavad Gita, for example. And that itself is, is a wow thing for me, because we see very, very little of that. And, and you're very young as well. So, you know, in the youth today, it, it, it's something that's very inspiring. That's why I wanted to do this video. But, you know, it's not only about saying those verse, verses in, in Sanskrit, but they, they seem to flow off the tip of your tongue. And for <laughs> me, you know, when some, something is like second nature to anybody, it, it automatically gives me two things, you know, it's commitment and dedication. It's commitment to learning and dedication to practicing what you learn. So how did your spirituality journey begin and on this path, you know, uh, your guru or gurus that you've had along the way, what, what's the importance of that guidance that you've had? Great. Uh, you had sent me a mail uh, with all the questions. I was very much inspired. And that, firstly, that, that gave me a vibe that you are a genuine uh, spiritual seeker and you are very inquisitive and enthusiastic and eager to find the truth, you know. <laughs> Uh, which is a which is a very important uh, quality which is mentioned in the Vedanta Sutra as it says, "Athato Brahma Jigyasa," which means one should always inquire about the higher truth. So it's very rare to find uh, somebody inquiring so much. Now, having said that, uh, like I have spoken uh, about my journey in many places, but what I would like to say, if you ask me in context of spirituality, is uh, first, I would like to talk for two minutes about materialism. No, otherwise, <laughs> you can't understand what spirituality is. Uh, actually, I was born in a very uh, aristocratic family in Gohati, and my grandfather, uh, he had uh, served as the IS officer in India, which is a very prestigious uh, uh, elite services for administration. It's from the government. Most of the Indians are aware. And my father had, had also been a very senior level bureaucrat as the commissioner and secretary. Now, why am I saying this? Because uh, these, when you are born to such a background, you are always uh, hovering around with the cream of the society. You see people who have reached the top of anything that you want. You see you know, actors, musicians, politicians, bureaucrats, teachers, 
and you you yourself have everything at your command at a just a phone and it's there you just call somebody and the secretary comes and he does it so when i was born in these uh, these kind of settings and i was always surrounded by all these people so then i saw that these people they had reached the pinnacle of what you say now success in material civilization they had everything they still have everything you know they have properties they have uh, they have good marriages uh, not necessarily great for everybody but decent good marriages you know they have good parents they have good children they have anything which a normal person would aspire in life you know? not career wise it's family career all these things i had seen now having seen all these i saw something very interesting in the first 18 years of my life i saw that these people they have everything which we were also taught from school yes yes you must have this you know you must get a job you must get a, a wife you must have children you know you must have grandchildren you must have at least two properties you must have three vehicles and then at the end you will be happy it's like a destination obsession which every uh, each one of us uh, were put through you know okay when you are at the age of 15 you have to pass your 10th then you will be happy then you have to pass your 12th then you have to become an engineer then you have to you know get a job then you have to get married so it was like this destination uh, it's like milestones as the materialistic society portrays them to be. so when i saw all these i saw people they have achieved all these things yet there was something which they didn't have in their life and that was happiness <laughs> so except this they had everything else i had seen the promise the fallacy of the material civilization that once you get all this you will be the happiest person you know there there is nobody who can uh, even check you counter you you know you will be the most happiest person so then when i started seeing these people i saw politicians especially you know trying to pull their opponents down they are they have a very big persona outside but when they come to my home i see they are fighting like animals in the dinner table why is it and then i was like these are the people who we are selecting as leaders <laughs> and uh, these are the people who have come to my home they have had dinner they have had lunch you know they have got all the nice things and then when uh, they are <laughs> with their friends you know i have seen how they behave huh? and so mm. then i started inquiring that uh, what what is that which they are missing in life why why is there so much obsession you know? because they have everything there's nothing uh, even if their wealth uh, doubles or quadruples it will not make any difference in their life they will still be like this <laughs> right. even if it becomes 1/10th of what they have that will not affect their life in any way and they have so much name fame so much but they lack happiness why is this so then i started uh, being inquisitive about different uh, religions because then there are only two ways you know one one is the material side and then you you hear from your childhood oh there's somebody called as god you know he's he's a big man out there you know he can give you whatever you want so then i i i was born into a hindu family so then of course he start with the uh, quote and quote the hindu scriptures you know like a uh, reading of the ramayan mahabharat and then bhagavad gita i was not very much inquisitive but i knew it was a conversation within the mahabharat so that's how it started uh, but the first 18 years of my life i i had done all self study then i had also gone inside you know different religions uh, like islam i had studied then christianity i have studied quite a bit a uh, bit of sikhism not so much on judaism i have studied and some facets of jainism and uh, buddhism quite similar to the vedic context so i had studied all this but then there was a uh, then there was a major challenge in front of me you know oh what's this all about there are this eight uh, 18 puranas are there then there are four vedas and like itihasas are there one not eight upanishads are there wow and then i came to know that there are uh, it's like you know one lakh verses are there in all the vedic scriptures if you combine them one lakh i guess is one tenth of a million right so now uh, sorry not one one lakh the mahabharat alone is one lakh you know it's like the mahabharat alone it's not the total sorry it's only one book mahabharat it's the 
biggest uh, it's actually a poem as you would be aware and it, it's the biggest book in the world you know bigger than iliad odyssey combine all of these you know much more than that so then i was like this one book itself is so vast what about the other books you know shrimad bhagavatam there are 18000 verses bhagavad gita has 700 Uh, shlokas and then Ramayan has so many shlokas verses and then Upanishads are there. My God, it's like so many. And then you start reading all this, but then it doesn't make sense because every book tells, "Oh, worship this God; He is supreme." Okay, go to this devata; you will get this, you will get that. And so there is a lot of material uh, incentives which I saw in the scriptures, you know, like. if you want a good wife you go to this devata go to lord shiva and ask you know he will bless you with a good wife something like this or if you want well then go to ganesh or go to kuber you know they will bless you with all this so then that was like a self study and then astrology also came along with it numerology came astronomy also came uh, but then yet i was uh, clueless about what's the conclusion because if you don't know the end then the means doesn't make sense you know <laughs> and then i was lucky uh, in the year 2010 i had gone to chennai uh, to do my bachelor's at srm university and then when i went there i met so many gurus there from different uh, sampradays different traditions like uh, from the shri sampraday from gaudiya sampraday brahma madhva uh, madhva sampraday and then i uh, read under them so many things especially uh, the bhagavad gita and shrimad bhagavatam so when i read under them i understood what actually uh, it means to be spiritual because till that time i always used to think spirituality means you know something mental like uh, <laughs> people think spiritual means to you know just meditate and sit and you know you are feeling something you know that's being spiritual you know? like uh, one mm. of my friend he was there you know he told i told him you know you should do some spiritual practices so then he told me yeah i also sit and think you know <laughs> <laughs> so so this this idea is there and once i went to a, a festival where there was a guru he was sitting and he was telling uh, there were like 10000 people he said everybody close your eyes now everybody pin drop silence close your eyes you know think that you are in front of a big mountain there is a nice river it's flowing <laughs> think that there are birds are chirping think there is beauty outside you know, and then just think and meditate now come back open your eyes you know. how was the spiritual experience so then uh, this 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 was my idea also you know imagine something have some weird feelings you know something unnatural happens that means something spiritual has happened you know. like i don't get sleep sometimes oh i have had awakening have you seen in us this world is very it's like a bus world everybody is having an awakening these days you know. <laughs> <laughs> it's basically they are not getting sleep sometimes and they think that's like awakening so i was also like this but when i read uh, these scriptures uh, with these gurus and so many other personalities and then i visited so many uh, holy dhams within india now uh, like kanchipuram i visited tirupati and then when i went there i learned from the different sages there and then they taught me what actually is uh, spirituality spirituality is something which is totally beyond your mental physical emotional intellectual it's like a connection of the heart with god as the word yoga or yoga as it's famous these days you know so then i read from the bhagavad gita that lord krishna speaks about different yoga systems you know? that yoga which is popularly known as yoga or yoga today that's what that's nothing but ashtanga yoga basically no but then lord krishna goes higher he says first karma yoga then he says ashtanga yoga gyan yoga then he culminates it into bhakti yoga so then i read the shrimad bhagavatam which was uh, written by the great sage vyas dev at the end of his spiritual maturity and then that uh, that scripture exclusively talks of pure spiritual knowledge you know? which is devoid of any material incentives like sometimes you read the vedas you will find as i said earlier oh worship lord shiva do this mantra 10000 times you will get a good wife you know, do this mantra 50000 times you will get a good son you know? <laughs> some like material incentives are there in the vedas you know? like to bring people close to uh, spirituality but then bhagavad gita and shrimad bhagavatam these are two books 
which purely talk of connection between you and the super soul as lord krishna says in gita that you know i am there uh, in the heart as the super soul so how to connect to him how to connect to that parmatma what practices should you do so when i started learning all this and i started practicing and applying it into my life then i realized okay Uh, spirituality means ac- actually to connect to the divine and feel the divine experience because otherwise it just uh, remains up to a mental level and uh, sometimes people think that okay this is spirituality that is spirituality but as they give the example if there's a bottle of honey you can see that bottle of honey <laughs> you can admire it you can wonder it you can dream about it so you can uh you can do whatever you want but if you want to experience honey there's only one way <laughs> you have to open that bottle and you have to drink it so okay. otherwise you cannot experience what is honey so therefore uh, when we do spiritual practices which uh, are mentioned in our uh, esteemed scriptures like for example uh, for kali yuga this current age which, where we are situated it's the age of quarrel and hypocrisy now uh, the bhagavatam says the most important uh, path is the chanting of uh, god's names actually hari nama sankirtan as the bhagavatam says so therefore when you chant the names of god and then when you uh, there are so many processes nine processes of uh, spiritual upliftment which we can talk some other time but the point what i am trying to tell you here is when you connect to the gurus and as you asked me regarding gurus uh, it is very important that we now uh, we have some kind of guide who can actually tell us uh, how to go ahead in our spiritual journey because uh, these days people have this idea you know oh you don't need a guru you can just do everything yourself you know <laughs> so they are right and wrong also because where they are right is uh, you can study everything yourself you don't need a guru okay but what the guru does is the guru establishes the guru's position in today's world people think guru is like a teacher you know he comes and sits and gives you some uh, knowledge and oh do this read this after this you read this and that's all but that's not the job of the guru the guru's main job is to establish your connection with god and whenever and wherever and whoever does any spiritual practice any sadhana we do it as an offering to the guru actually the guru offers those services on our behalf to god because the guru is a representative as lord krishna says in uh, gita na tad vidhi pranipate na pariprashne na sevaya krishna says that uh, render some seva some service and enquire humbly and then he says upadekshanti te gyanam gyanina stato darshina because they have actually seen the truth okay so therefore the guru is the one who is establishing your lost connection with god and he he is the one who offers everything so it's like uh, you want to meet the president of a country you can't meet it's impossible he or she is a very busy person but then they they have their secretary you know or you know somebody who is close to them so through them you can go right you can't just say oh i am so great you know the president of uh, my country will come and tell me hey sir madam i want to have a chat with you know nobody is that great it can happen but we have to be very great so if if a president of a country uh, it's impossible for us to even meet that person in this lifetime so what to speak of uh, god almighty who is the controller of all the universes as the bhagavatam says in sarva loka maheshwaram krishna also says that in the gita how can we uh, have that much purity and that much elevation within us that we can go and meet him and discuss uh, and have a one to one relation that is possible but uh, at our condition stage where we are currently we have so many impurities you know so then it is next to impossible for us to connect to god we can do things artificially externally but that doesn't mean you have the connection so the guru is the one who establishes this connection that is the primary responsibility which happens when the guru gives you initiation diksha so when you take diksha under a guru then guru is the one who promises god that uh, oh god this person has uh, now promised me to do these many number of um, mantras or any set number of spiritual practices every day he or she is eager to develop a connection with you so i on his behalf or her behalf i am promising you that he will always do this and therefore please 
for god for god's sake for your sake please help this person come close to you only then it is possible that we makes real spiritual progress otherwise all the progress that we make is in the mind only it's not actually happening and now somebody may think okay i don't have a guru you know what, what will happen i don't get diksha i don't have diksha or something like this so then the answer is very simple it's not our job to find a guru we just have to be sincere and we have to pray sincerely to god then it is his job to send us a guru like he had sent for dhruva maharaj he had sent narad muni Na, dhruva maharaj wanted to look for lord vishnu and then narad muni was told by lord vishnu that he he really wants to come to me so now go and <laughs> go and uh, get the job done and then narad muni came and gave him this mantra no? om namo bhagavate vasudevaya so therefore if we do not have a guru then we should pray to pray to krishna and then it is his job it's his duty it's his responsibility that he will send us a guru eventually and then by that we will make actual spiritual progress <laughs> wonderful wonderful thank you so much for sharing all this and um because we are from a uh, from a culture that that pays a lot of respect to gurus i i wish to just say this because not everybody who who would watch this um hail from the same country uh you know gurus go beyond the the subject knowledge like you said it's not simply a teacher it goes beyond subject knowledge and it's that um guiding force that guiding energy that gets you onto that path and guides you um and i and i read something yesterday and it said real teaching occurs when the disciple achieves some level of discipline and uh you know there is between this interaction guru shishya interaction um there is you know it, it goes deeper into the relationship where the shishya actually surrenders into the teaching so this brings me to the next question because you've spoken so much and so beautifully about this divine um divine energy that we want to connect with but in one of your um recent videos you also spoke about um atma gyan that connection to your own true identity and nature okay of course you've already uh, spoken about the connection to the divine energy uh, or god or higher consciousness whatever one calls it but the connection to that inner in that identity and i think this is going to shed a, a little more light into what you said earlier about being empty in spite of having everything else still you know finding that there is some kind of void and and you know now it, i think is if there was ever a need to be more in tune or connected to the that true nature is now because in the last 12 months especially we've heard so much about mental health and a lot of this comes from this lack of i feel uh, correct me if i'm wrong but this lack of connection or uh, you know you just feel disconnected it's also a word that we hear a lot i just feel disconnected you know i don't know it just feel disconnected So can you tell us a little more about atma gyan and the the importance of connecting to the true self that self which which goes beyond what we're conditioned to believe we are or that we think we are Yeah so uh, first of all uh, I would like to clear this about atma gyan and you said you know and the divine consciousness about god so the example is given my shiksha guru had given a very beautiful example no we have this hand you take the right hand or the left hand <laughs> now somebody may like to eat chocolates or you know like he gave the example of gulab jamun but in canada people may not be aware so i am giving example of chocolates so imagine this hand develops a desire you know oh i want to eat, eat some nice chocolate you know like in europe there are lint chocolates beautiful now is there any way that this hand can get that pleasure there is no way <laughs> this hand can just take a chocolate and it can just uh, do something like this but it can't it can't experience that chocolate right why because uh, there's only way one way by which this hand individually can experience that chocolate how is that that hand has to take the chocolate put it inside the mouth then then it can experience the whole body can experience that pleasure so similarly um, as the shopnishad says you know eko bahunam yo vidadati kama it says uh, that uh, so this means that we individually if we try to be happy because there's because people have so much these days you know, like 10 times more than what our grandparents had you know, externally 
but still they are not happy. Why? Because as the example is given, another example is given in the uh, shastras that if if there's a if there's a tree, you individually water the leaf, the twigs, the branches. It will not be nourished. How does the tree get nourishment? You have to water the root. Once you enter water the root, the leaves, branches, fruits, every single part of the tree is nourished. Okay. So similarly. Our connection to God is very similar. He, it is said, He is like the root. Okay, so if we want to know ourselves, forget about God. If you have no interest in God, if you just want to know about ourselves, even then, it's very important that we try to establish a connection with Him because it's like watering the root of the tree. And then, when we do that, gradually, what happens? Uh, they say, like Prahlad Maharaj says in the Srimad Bhagavatam, that. You are like a oh Lord Narsimha Dev, who is one of the avatars of Lord Vishnu. He says, Oh Lord Narsimha Dev, you are like a mirror, you know. <laughs> you know, when we decorate ourselves, you know, the mirror automatically becomes beautiful, you know. So, so this means that when we establish a connection with God by doing spiritual practices through whichever tradition you are inspired by, Hinduism or in any any tradition, Islam or Christianity, whichever inspires you. When you do that, then you discover yourself more and more. It's like finding yourself uh, within that journey. You know? And then that finally cul culminates into union with God. So it, it is not that uh, we are just doing something and suddenly we will uh, be connected with God one day. No, it's not like that. Within that journey, we are discovering ourselves. Uh, and when I say ourselves, I don't mean to say you know our talents or creativity or something like this. But our inner true self which is actually uh, which is actually the soul which is beyond all these material coverings you know which is taking birth again and again because of desires so that that is actual atma gyan when we actually uh, realize who we are so it's like uh, in the scriptures it is also said that uh, when somebody's mind is 100% clear Clear means it's very, it's one hundred percent pure. You have no materialistic uh, ill desires. You only have spiritual desires. Then, at that same very moment, you see the Paramatma in the heart. So it is not that you have to cleanse your mind and then you will see see the Paramatma. It's not like that. The moment your mind is cleansed, so at that same moment, the Paramatma form is visible. It's just that moment. <laughs> So therefore, if we want to know more about ourselves, discover ourselves as the seva, so we have to do the spiritual practices which uh, the scriptures advise us. And then we will uh, develop more connection with ourselves. Like so many people, uh, when they do some spiritual practices, they say, oh, I never thought that I, I want to do something here also. But then I started discovering that this is also my area of interest, you know. And then if you are talking of mental health, it works there also. Like for mental health, uh, why, why is mental health such a big buzzword these days? Why is it becoming such a big buzzword? Because in the last 50 years, you have totally denounced everything related to the mental health. You have just thrown it to the garbage. Last 50 years. The only way you can be happy is by external acquisition. Unless you have that, you cannot be happy. You are considered successful only if you have external things. But now there is a problem with this idea. Externally, things may or may not be in your control. So then if they are not in your control, then you become miserable. If it is in your control, you get that temporary high. But then again, you fall. So uh, it's like blood sugars. You know, if, you, if there is big uh, rise and big fall then you know the person becomes very moody gets crazy why because all the time in the society in the last 50 years this is how it has happened or last 500 years i would say you know we have these great kings you know this they've gone and conquered lands and you know they are great known as great you know from that time i was a small child i heard this word alexander the great Later on, I wondered what was so great about him. Anyways, nothing against him. But what I'm trying to tell you is why this has happened. Because we have forgotten that there is something known as the 
happiness of the mind even bhagavad gita says that you know uh, that uh, satisfaction is a very uh, satisfaction of the mind is very important for happiness okay so therefore the easiest way to have a good mental health is to number one have some regular spiritual practices in your life then what happens is uh, you will not be too much bogged up by what is happening in the external world because today you may have a job tomorrow you may be fired <laughs> <laughs> no then if you if you uh, if even krishna says you know brahma bhuta prasanna atma na sochati na kangshati he says one who does not hanker or lament you know then that is brahma bhuta prasanna atma he is prasanna means he is happy and that is the time spiritual progress begins actually you know mad bhaktim lavate param he says so therefore if we really want to have a good mental health apart from uh, writing you know so many things like people write gratitude journal these days you know like they are trying to uh, do so many things which work sometimes but uh, many times you will see they don't work why it is not that what they are doing is wrong or it's not uh, right it is good but they are missing that uh, basic element of spirituality within their life so when you do that then you understand uh, that okay today i am have a i am having a job great no problem but tomorrow if i don't have that job should i go and commit suicide no <laughs> or should i go into depression no so uh, when we elevate ourselves spiritually then what happens is automatically we develop a different dimension in life why in the universe is people uh, are is people feeling today that you no know, my mental health is suffering because they have become so much consumed within this reality you know that any time anything happens in their career or health or relationships my god they, it's like mayhem inside you know it's like oh my god i don't want to live you know this person left me i lost this job i lost my you know uh, my reputation this happened that happened so then i have no reason to live and because our sense of self worth our definition of success is in a wrong place because that may or may not be there even if you read the ancient scriptures like so many examples are there of yudhishthir maharaj he was a he was the emperor of the entire world and then one day there was this gambling match in the mahabharat and just a speck of a day he lost everything he became a pauper a beggar he was like a insignificant person and later on he uh, fought the war with lord krishna and the pandavas and he again became the emperor uh, so that is why he is uh, known as uh, dharmraj yudhishthir because he was one who was always calm even he was steady at the time of war so uh, simple living high thinking that is a very important mantra mm-hmm. so the the easiest way when i have talked to my gurus they have said that do whatever is required in your material life you want to you have to feed yourself right that's basic necessity so have a profession have your own business or have a job or be self employed whichever is comfortable for you unless your forefathers have left you a big fortune <laughs> and then be engaged have some creative uh, activities which you can do and the morning time specifically you dedicate for spiritual practices and then uh have a good community where you know you can uh, enrich yourself spiritually you know you can meet them in the weekends and then have a home if required in rent or you want to buy a home then buy it but don't uh, do something which is actually uh, going to ruin your mental peace you know like uh, sometimes people they take some big loans you know and because of that they have to keep working you know 18 hours a day and they always have this threat, threat if my employer fires me you know who will pay the monthly that emi or interest or something like this so uh, have, have a life uh, get married if you want to and have kids uh, there's absolutely no problem nobody has to go to the forest but do not make material achievements the goal of life once you do this then you are destined to be uh, a failure eventually because you may be the best now when you are young but when you are old then that's going to be a time when your uh, everything is tested you know how many people are saluting you when you are old that's mm-hmm. when you will realize that oh these people they were cheering me they were uh, laughing and dancing with me but they were actually not with me they were with my you know youth my body my influence and now when i have lost all this 
they are not even bothered if i am existing what to speak of asking me if i am living happily or not they 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 just don't even care about me you know maybe a few family members even within them there are so many troubles these days <laughs> mm-hmm. yeah. so therefore now uh, do whatever is required materially have a nice job you can be a millionaire a billionaire there is absolutely no problem you can do whatever you want uh, depending on the uh, codes of the scriptures but that should not be our main goal our main focus our main focus should be to develop a connection with god and when we keep doing that parallelly especially by doing things in the morning then on the other side okay material life sometimes it's good sometimes it's not good so then our fluctuations our mental fluctuations will be very less and that is the only way by which you can maintain a good uh, mental health i would say <laughs> mm-hmm, mm-hmm. very very interesting everyone you see is is very inspiring and i love what you said about you know success being measured by what you have externally and and shifting from that mindset to succeeding from within let the success come from inside out more so that you you have the strong foundation um so now my next question is I, i've watched some of your videos and you speak a lot about routine and you mentioned something right now about uh doing some practices in the morning and because i'm studying ayurveda as well in ayurveda there's a lot of importance given to routine whether it is dinacharya which is daily routines or rutacharya seasonal routines and all of those routines aim at um creating harmony within around and being in harmony with nature for example with you know the the energies in the universe um so what what can you say about this the the morning time and and having a routine because you know i heard this also somewhere that i really liked you know the rest of the day we're kind of like serving other people when we go for our job or when we're looking after the family that time in the morning treat it as serving yourself so that again you have that strong foundation from which you can do everything else so can you say a few words about this the importance of the morning routine or having a routine spiritual routine Yes very good question in fact uh, when you ask this question i remember a proverb <laughs> mm-hmm. the proverb it's not like a ancient english proverb but it's used these days you know especially in the corporate scenario it's used uh, it's, uh, the proverb is you can only give what you have mm-hmm. so that sums up this routine so when we are having a routine uh, it's like uh, if you go to fly you know in a aeroplane what does what does the uh, they announce you know if there is a lack of oxygen pressure you know, put the mask on yourself and then put on your baby you know right yeah so it's like oh no no my baby is more important i'll protect the baby you know? but then what about you <laughs> if you are only not living how can you protect the baby right so uh, when we are doing uh, spiritual practices in the morning uh, then it is like uh it's like see when you are doing uh, your sadhana it is like uh when you touch a electric sh- uh, socket you, you just get a shock you know it's like wow <laughs> so god is like that energy powerhouse he's the source of all energy so when we are connecting with him then we are recharging ourselves it's like you put your mobile on charge in the morning you know <laughs> so it is exactly like uh, uh recharging your batteries because why 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 because when uh, in ayurveda and in scriptures it is also said about the gunas you know like three gunas are there more sattva guna rajoguna tamoguna so when you are sleeping for 6 hours uh, uh, or 7 hours or 8 hours maybe even 12 hours sometimes these days <laughs> then what happens is uh, you are in tamoguna you are in mode of darkness ignorance because it's like temporary death you are not aware of anything it's, it's like anybody comes and chops off your neck then you never know it's like it's you are almost like dead so then uh, it is suggested that you get up uh, when when your sleep breaks then uh, you take a bath in cold water it's very much important in the morning of course depending on medical your situation i'm not endorsing that but if if you are a normal person and you are able to do things normally then most of the people they can do this you know taking bath in cold water 
even medical science ways also that uh, that also is recommended because that activates your sympathetic nervous system and you know? then you uh, you start uh, all uh, your every you your awareness increases you know? and then you uh, you sit and you do your mantras or your any asan that you do or uh, reading of the reading of the scriptures is very important when you do that and listening from your gurus you know in the morning uh, especially uh, it's recommended during the brahma muhurt we do so brahma muhurt is one and a half hours before sunrise uh, roughly so in the sunrise is at you know 5:30 then from 4 around that time so it's recommended that we uh, do it during the brahma muhurt and uh, it is said that whatever we do during brahma muhurt you know that uh, that actually happens in our life you know? so in fact that is why also they say in india if if you see a dream in the morning it's it, it becomes true why morning doesn't mean like when sun is up in the sky but just before morning it's the brahma muhurt time so because when it's brahma muhurt the denizens of the higher planets you know the the devatas they, they it is said that they are uh, roaming in the sky and you know they actually invest you with all your powers and poten- with their powers and potencies you know they empower you and whatever you do during that time that sets the tone for the rest of the day you know so for example you can just try this yourself you know one day you get up just don't do any of this just take your mobile and go to instagram and just waste your time one hour in the morning <laughs> mm. just write down in the night of that day how did your day go you will see it, it will be the worst day of your <laughs> week mm. <laughs> because it's like the start it's like uh, the energy you know it's like the fuel fuel is not there how will the car run there is no electricity how will the system run as they say um, if you are too busy to meditate for uh, one hour then you must do it for two hours they say like this <laughs> yes <laughs> it's like you know when the f1 cars are racing you know, then they they stop for some time you know they have to refuel now somebody may say oh why are you wasting time you know you should go and go in the race you know why are you coming to this part and you are refueling it's a waste of time but then you can't do you you can't go for a mile also you know what to speak of winning the race so morning sadhana is like you are enriching your mind and your body and Uh, your intelligence these three should be there in the morning sadhana you should enrich yourself uh, by reading the scriptures or any text which inspires you from the ancient traditions when you read them what happens in the morning is your intelligence gets sharpened which will help you during the day to make right decisions and you can also learn from the mistakes of other people so suppose in if you talk of you know ramayana or mahabharat if you read then you will see or oh, somebody did some mistake then this happened no so i should not be like him i should not be like her no so it doesn't mean you do it one day but you have to do it every day as the shrimad bhagavatam says you know nityam bhagavat seva nityam is every day so when you do that regularly when you make it a practice Uh, and even physically also you know you should be uh, sitting in a good posture and not just oh, some people are like taking the beads and you know they are <laughs> going into the bed and they are saying oh we will chant like this no it's not like that or you can do some surya namaskar or you go to the gym or have some discipline of your body very important like as i said getting up uh, in a fixed time that is very essential uh, not saying that oh anyways tomorrow i'll get up at 5 you know oh maybe if if it gets late i'll get up at 6 you know so not like that trying your best to have a fixed time when you get up uh, because when you fix that then your sleep time will be fixed during the night because otherwise if you say oh anyways uh, i will sleep any time i'll get up at any time you know then uh, you you may go to a party in the dead of the night and then you may spoil everything right so therefore uh, it should have these three elements you know you you should be uh, energized physically then mentally when you are doing mantras as the word mantra says you know manatrai that which that which delivers the mind from what from anxiety from negativity all these things and mantra delivers you from all the negativity uh, but it helps you connect to god you know that that is why mantras are very important that's for the mind 
and for the intelligence we have to read the scriptures or any ancient epic which inspires us so once we do these three then what will happen it will affect us overall during the day even if you are going for your job or you are spending time with your family anywhere it will always affect you there if your intelligence is very clear then people will notice it during your job the oh this person is very much clear what he or she says he, they do not that oh today i said this and ah, it's, we'll do it some other time no it's not like this so then you lose your credibility you yeah. lose respect so if you are uh, if you are very true to your word if you are uh, very much uh, following the principles then everybody will like you naturally you will become a uh, you will attract people naturally not like the way people attract these days <laughs> and that is why it is said in the scriptures that one who does uh, uh, diligent practices every day morning uh, that person is known as dhira dhira janapriya dhira adhira means dhira means the good people adhira means the criminals the not so nice people the bad people janapriya means you will be liked by the good and the bad imagine the good people are liking you the criminals are also liking you you will become like that in in the scriptures narad muni was like that you know when he would go to the heavens indra would come down and touch his feet and when he would go to meet hiranyakashyapu he was a demon he came down and touched his feet oh great sage please, please enlighten me wow incredible <laughs> so it is not going to only benefit us spiritually it will also benefit us materially then we will make the right decisions we will not give in to the uh, pangs of the mind temptations we will be able to resist temptations and these days so many people in fact today also somebody asked me you know why why are people in today's world uh, in instagram somebody asked me that why are they not being able to be faithful to one partner why why are they hopping like animals from one person to the other why is it happening because they are not finding happiness because they think that getting into a relationship or getting married will solve all my problems it doesn't solve it worsens it actually if if you if you are uh, if you are like a, if, if you don't have harmony within yourself then uh, when you get into a relationship or you get married that disharmony will pass on to your spouse and then that person will uh, reflect it back to you so you will become more miserable like that you know so yeah. therefore uh, so many temptations people have these days you know people are not able to maintain chastity towards one partner why is it because they are giving into the whims of the mind so when we do our morning sadhana properly we will be able to say no to temptations that is the only way out otherwise you can't artificially say that no 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 this is bad i will not do i will be a nice person you know i will be good i will try my best no it doesn't work like that <laughs> mm-hmm, mm-hmm. our parents their generation was a bit different parents or grandparents even when they did not do much spirituality they could still to a large extent they could say no to temptations because they had a very simple life and that time they had this cultural norm you know oh you should not go outside you know you should not do that this is infidelity or something but nowadays in our generation that cultural norm is not there so now if you do not have self control nobody is going to pick up the phone and uh, scold you hey why are you doing this you know you should have done that this is not good nowadays everybody is like okay be by yourself do whatever you want right so now in our generation this morning sadhana is very important because only then we can keep a check on ourselves because now there is nobody else it's not like the generation of our parents where you do something wrong your father will chastise you your mother will chastise you your grandparents will give you a scolding hey, you should not do like this this is wrong do this don't do like this you know now it is in fact if if you do in some countries if the parents do that they the children will call the police okay my father is you know scolding me they will yeah. do like this so then the parents also can't do anything so now it is that is more required than previous generations so it's very important it's very good that you pointed this out very very good um yes and uh, for all the viewers this is these are uh very very valuable um advices that you can get and uh, like we said before we started this video this can go on we can keep talking about this subject because there's so much to say and you have so much 
goodness to share. But I'm going to close it with one last question, just because you have brought up the, 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 the subject of partnership. Um, in one of your videos, you, you mentioned, you know, people chasing independence nowadays, especially our generation. I think, you know, we, we want to be independent. Oh, I'm independent. I don't need anyone. Um, and again, being independent, having everything, but still feeling that void and feeling that emptiness and being miserable at the end of the day. Um, so you, so now I'm bringing in a little bit of astrology because you're such a great uh, um, astrologer, I would say, and you have so much to share about this. You, you spoke about the five months where Jupiter is transiting Aquarius and which is a very, very good time to evolve more into the culture of interdependence. So can you very, very quickly give a few tips to our viewers on how we can use this period to evolve that way? Yeah, so uh, first you have to understand, like uh, in the scriptures, there are three levels mentioned. Nowadays, many life coaches, they also say this. So uh, the first level is, you know, dependence. Dependence means you are dependent on somebody, you want somebody to come and uh, do some magic in your life. <laughs> That's what is dependence. Financial magic, mental magic, intellectual magic, sexual magic, some form of magic is required. You know, I am unhappy. I will only be happy if I'm with that one right person or that soulmate as God has made for me specially, right? How I am, that doesn't matter. But God has somewhere mm. in this world uh, created another fool like me who will be very much interested in me, you know, and then they will come and give everything that they have and um, we will take everything and then we'll be happy, right? Uh, in fact, nowadays, uh, there, are soul, there are no soulmates, you know, they're like soul groups these days because every three years, the soulmates keep changing these days. Anyway, so... So that's the concept of dependence. You know, when you want somebody to come and make you happy, that is that's a very poor uh, stage where uh, you you are not having those activities which can actually make you happy to some extent or to a large extent, I would say. So the scriptures advise that one should not be dependent like this. Otherwise, you are setting in yourself for a lot of uh, misery. Now, then the next level is, uh, it is uh, independence, uh, dependence, independence. So <laughs> now you are not dependent anymore. You are powerful, you are strong, you are independent, you can do whatever you want, you know, you have all the strength of the world. And uh, when somebody is independent, they claim to not need anybody. But when they say, I don't need anybody, what they are trying to tell is that I don't need anybody to uh, to not be dependent. But that doesn't mean necessarily that they are happy because happiness doesn't come from independence. Happiness is something else because ultimately, as uh, as uh, the scriptures also say, that the prime need of a atma, there's only one need, and if this need is fulfilled nothing else the soul needs if this one need is not fulfilled everything else is there it doesn't matter what is that one need that need is to love somebody and to be loved by somebody mm -hmm. that is the primary need if this is fulfilled then you have everything like if this is not there you just don't exist you are miserable basically so independence brings us to a platform where we can start experiencing that love with somebody else and when i talk of love i don't mean conjugal relationships it can be with any other human being okay mother father anybody but uh, it doesn't make us happy imagine a person who says imagine an office you know there are like 20 people and everybody says oh we are all independent we will work uh, we will do everything ourselves now you should do everything yourself, but when it time when time comes to you know collaborate, exchange ideas, then we move to the level of interdependence. And if you see externally, dependence and interdependence they look very similar. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, two people are staying together. Oh, this person is doing something. That person is doing something else. So uh, once uh, there was a lady from London. She had asked me, you know. Why, why earlier, where uh, in the ancient times, uh, where, why were 
the men dependent on the women for the household work and why were the women dependent on the men for you know financial security stability why because it it appears they are dependent the man is coming and from the office and the lady is cooking something and giving so it, it appears but oh he is dependent on her if she is not there who will cook and it feels that she is dependent on him right but actually it is not like this because if you see the tradition of the vedas uh, the men uh, they would always go to gurukul when they were uh, like kids you know after 5 years it is said you must go to the gurukul so when you go to the gurukul in the gurukul all the training is given to how to cook how to wash your clothes how to you know learn politics all the masculine and the feminine all these things are taught so it was never ever the fact that uh, the vedic culture um, encourages being dependent on somebody no it 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 never did that okay? and especially when it comes to exchanging of love see where, what do you mean by interdependence interdependence means that okay i can do everything myself you can also do everything yourself <laughs> but i will surrender a portion of me and i will try to get that from you and i will provide something which you can do it yourself i will try to provide that to you by that we will develop a relationship because there is some core dependency but that that's not actually dependence we are not becoming dependent on somebody we can do it ourselves but there is sweetness there is love there is you know beauty there is uh, you know, there is this feeling of being loved feeling of loving somebody feeling of being cared we imagine everybody stays in their homes you know, being independent and then how do we celebrate birthdays mm -hmm. <laughs> when you are having a birthday what does it mean 10 people or 20 people are coming and saluting you yes my dear sir you are great you exist we are certifying that you exist you are great that's why they say happy birthday right, right. <laughs> what is the meaning of happy birthday they are cherishing the day when you were born that means they are putting a stamp on the fact that you even exist or you were born one day that was the day you started existing materially externally physically so therefore when uh, when we want to ex, uh, experience love then we cannot be in the uh, level of dependence we can uh, mm -hmm. or even independence we have to come to the level of interdependence but the biggest problem is as i said dependence and interdependence they look very similar you know externally it seems oh they are you know, what they are doing you know they are depending on each other actually it's not like that so everybody anybody whoever wants to come into the institution of marriage or they want to come to any any relationship especially conjugal relationships they must focus on first of all being uh, an independent person uh, independent doesn't mean financial you know nowadays if you say independence it means no financial mm -hmm. independence so no, i'm not saying that you may be financially independent but are you uh, mentally independent <laughs> mm -hmm. are you intellectually independent can you make the right decisions for yourself and then when you have uh, another person who is also independent but is ready to be interdependent with you then only the relationship flourishes otherwise mm -hmm. relationships don't work these days because in a true sense although people talk of lot of independence but actually in kali yuga people are becoming more and more dependent on whom they may say we are not dependent on people but they are becoming dependent on uh, like you know alcohol Mm -hmm. or smoking they are becoming dependent on you know watching movies you know so it is not that people have become independent <laughs> in kali yuga people have placed their dependencies from humans to some somebody else actually that is what that that's exactly what is happening actually so because of that they are losing their own independence and they are becoming more and more dependent they are becoming more and more uh, they are seeking external validation more and more because the more you are validated externally the more you feel i am more independent you know oh i have you know 1 million followers in fact there was a person once he had uh, booked a career consultation from me for his horoscope and then he asked me a question sir should i be employed under somebody or should i be independent <laughs> okay mm. so many times people ask should i be employed or have a independent profession then i told him you cannot be independent in this world 
because even if you have a quote and quote so called independent profession you will be dependent on your clients right <laughs> if your clients don't pay you then you are you are dead <laughs> mm -hmm. you know or even if you are independent then you have to collaborate with other people who are there in your field by that you will grow exponentially otherwise you will just have a linear growth you know you have to have a team you have to have uh, either you have to have subordinate subordinates you know if you are a leader or if you are an employee you are a junior you will have you know uh, seniors or either you have seniors or you have juniors you will always have some equal who is also trying to do the things which you are doing so then when we develop this culture of interdependence then we actually will experience uh, happiness in this world otherwise uh, we we just keep bloating our ego in the name of independence actually and exactly. as i said what happens what what is happening people are becoming less and less independent they are becoming more and more dependent you know, on external things like you know fast food you know like uh, watching tv all the time internet so many things you know and you know people are thinking that we are becoming more and more independent but ultimately they are becoming more and more unhappy because they don't have any genuine connection with anybody they are not able to relate to anybody they they feel so distant emotionally because uh, from their childhood what has happened is uh, like especially many parents and children nowadays there's a lot of talk on parenting you know the, they've also happened many many times children they have experienced that uh, when we did good in our school then our parents always loved us but the moment we did so not so nice <laughs> we failed or we got average marks our parents they behaved as if we don't exist it's like as if we are a curse to them we are like a burden to them and many times people have experienced that parents have compared them to different children within their own community okay this person's uh, son or daughter got more marks why didn't you get so because of this what has happened is there's a lot of uh, in psychology or psychiatry there's these buzzwords you know narcissistic behavior this has come up very much because narcissism comes out one of the reasons of people becoming more and more narcissistic is that people people have valued other people only when there are externally good things yeah because of that they they cannot feel a connection which is independent of the fact that that person is having achievements or not having achievements <laughs> mm -hmm. the children have the especially in our generation we have we have never seen anybody or at least in my circles in my humble experience i have hardly seen anybody being appreciated for just the way they are mm. or no for like uh, okay uh, you are appreciated why oh you have this great thing you know you are exceptional you are multi talented you are beautiful you are smart mm -hmm. you are rich you are a good public speaker or you know you are very good at you know seducing somebody because of that you have some uh, some external talent because of that you have been appreciated always not because of, of the way you are you are just the way you are hardly anybody gets appreciated right <laughs> Right. so therefore if we want to get into interdependence the the first thing we have to learn is to appreciate start appreciating people for who they are internally we may not love every aspect of theirs it is not that we have to be their fan or we have to say oh i love everything about you now if somebody has a lot of negativity then we might have to protect ourselves and maintain distance from them that is different i'm not saying that just go and jail with everybody you have to be very careful when you let somebody inside your mind especially you know? <laughs> because whoever you let inside your life mentally your friends or your spouse or your close members they will end up affecting your mental health it's very crucial that uh, you 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 have a good circle of people who motivate you but suppose you don't have that then you can start like this that whoever comes in my life whichever relationship it is any dynamics it is i will appreciate people for who they are just the way they are you don't have to have followers you don't have to have a job you don't have to have money you don't have to be beautiful you don't have to be smart you don't have to look rich you are you are a, you are you are basically the the element of god is manifesting in you mm. that itself is enough for me to love you and respect you nothing else is required
Yes, that is what the Ishwapanishad says. Eko bahuna yo vidadati kaman. There is one supreme absolute and then all others. Uh, they come from him only. So if anybody reads the Bhagavad Gita, Krishna says that I am there in everybody's heart. I am there in an ugly person's heart, in a beautiful person's heart. <laughs> Every person's heart, I am there. So if you claim that I actually love God, then mm. how in the universe can you uh, value somebody just because they have something external? Because what they are, who they are, that alone itself should be enough for us to love that person. And once you value people for who they are, not for their achievements, not for their external coverings, then people will be drawn to you like anything. Mm. <laughs> because then you will become a rare species. <laughs> you will have, you may not have anything, but uh, in fact, there was a very uh, big uh, sannyasi, a very big guru in India. Uh, he is managing like multiple projects, you know, in India. I won't take his name. So once a reporter came and asked him, you know, my dear sir, how do you manage these big projects? You know, like, Thousands of disciples under you. How do you do it? Do you even get sleep? Do you have time to eat? Or, or do you just... Uh, are you overwhelmed? Are you tensed? Uh, well, uh, he answered that. Actually, I don't manage projects. Then he said, well, uh, who manages them? These are under you, right? You manage. So, no, I don't manage them. I manage people. And then when he gave this answer, this reporter was shocked. Mm. He was like... Wow. Yes, the people are managing it, not you. So you are managing people basically. And he and uh, he asked, this reporter asked his disciples that what is that what is that which is there in your guru which made you leave your job and do, do his seva full time without even getting a single penny? What is that which is there inside your guru which has made you dedicate your entire life you did not get married, you were living like a monk and you have dedicated everything to his cause. What is that which is there in him? Well, uh, his disciples, they answered <laughs> that my our guru is the only person we have seen in this entire life, not including parents also. They have kept parents also in the other category. He said the, our guru is the only person who has always valued us and every sphere of life, in any circumstance of life, just because we are part and parcels of God. When, when we did not have anything, then also he valued us. Now when we have everything, we are managing projects on his behalf. We have thousands of followers. We are his disciples. Then now also he values us. But just because we are famous now as his disciples, it doesn't mean he values us more. <laughs> he values us the same way he valued us when we were just beginners, when we were like directly his disciples. So, so uh, and then when we try to exchange, uh, as they say, uh, there are like six loving exchanges, you know, uh, that uh, listening to somebody and speaking your heart. You know, that is, uh, these are two ways. And the other ways, of course, uh, eating from somebody and uh, feeding somebody. Okay. These are the ways by which you can uh, develop relationships with people. And when you value people for who they are, not because of their circumstance, you will become like a magnet. <laughs> mm. Because people will feel, they will get this vibe that this person is selfless. This person has no hidden agenda. Nowadays in the world, people, uh, in fact, People who have become very rich or famous, they feel more and more empty and lonely. Why? <laughs> because they know that all these people who are just praising me day in and day out, they are praising me because they will get some benefit out of me. That mm -hmm. selflessness is not there. Nowadays, people have become very professional. No? They will only develop a relationship with you if they see some profit. <laughs> 50 years back, people would, you know, try to gain, like in our parents and relatives generation, you know, they would try to gain some uh, benefits from the relatives always. But now the level, it has become so bad that we can't even form a relationship with somebody if we do not see benefits. Mm -hmm. Why Why has it become like this? Because we have made external achievements the benchmark, the barometer of even having relationships. 
how crazy that is you know because you may be a millionaire and you may have a friend who is uh, who may not be a millionaire but he may be a very nice friend to you will you lose that friendship just because that person doesn't have money well what about your other millionaire friends are they your friends they may be your co workers but they may not be your friend necessarily so therefore we need to value people for who they are and just be selfless and just interact with them and try to try to see what is try to value what they value if somebody mm. values something very much we should take interest in that okay you are you value yoga very much okay tell me about yoga then let them per, let that person speak for one hour two hours then that person will feel oh i value something now this person is showing interest that means this person values me not that he values yoga necessarily mm-hmm. but he values me so therefore when we value those ideals which are sacred to that person then we may not follow them we may not do yoga we may we may be <laughs> we might have nothing to do with yoga but do we respect what people respect do we respect what people stand for do we have these boundaries and do we have loving exchanges so we have to be selfless inside only then uh, we can develop these relationships and therefore that brings me to the last point you know this jupiter's big transit in uh, kumbh rashi which is happening you know the kumbh mela why as like uh, there was once a person who asked me you know i was in italy recently uh, 2019 so what happened in italy <laughs> there was one big sanyasi he had come he uh, and he is from chicago so he came to italy and he said oh actually you know i was in kumbh mela some time back and there was a crowd of you know 60 million uh, people they came and you know they were taking bath they were doing and these italians they were sitting and they were like what did we just hear 60 million and then nobody dared to ask him <laughs> one person wrote something in a paper he just passed it to that uh, sanyasi Uh, my dear sir no offense to your knowledge very sorry to ask this and it's anonymous you know <laughs> but we have a burning doubt you just said 60 million people was it 60 or was it 6 or did you make some miscalculation with this indian system of lakhs and millions you know then he read this and he said no it was 60 million you know he banged that note into his table and these italians were like huh? <laughs> 60 million people they have gone to take bath in one place how is it possible our entire country's population is 60 million near about that how in the universe can entire italy go and take bath in a in a river how is it possible and why in the universe are they doing that in the first place you know so why why is this there because so that people when one person is uh, doing uh, doing spiritual practices when you go and see there are 60 million other people like me you are surrounded everywhere there is no place to breathe <laughs> then how do you feel about yourself yes he may be from a different religion he may worship a different deity that is that is that's there i am not saying that all the 60 million people they have the same practices and they are do, have following the same path but there is one thing which is common what is that they are trying to do something which is beyond the material coverings that is something which is common and that is the reason why there is kumbh mela when jupiter enters kumbh rashi kumbh rashi aquarius is the sign of interdependence is the sign of togetherness i can do everything alone imagine these 60 million people they are sitting in their homes alone and doing and now imagine these people are together Mm. and there are so many people they meet each other somebody is from uh, you know denmark somebody is from you know chicago somebody is from italy somebody is from germany somebody is from china people from all over the world they come and associate the point here is it's not about when kumbh mela is there or where kumbh mela is there is it in india or somewhere else the point here is that uh, we have to understand that we can collectively inspire one another so therefore if you have people if you know people who are also in similar journeys like you then always collaborate with them 
always try to listen from them about their experiences and share your experiences. By that, you can inspire one another because they are very few in number. The world population is you know, 7 billion and look look at the, the count, you know, it's only 60 million. Anyways, I'm just assuming that they are the only uh, people doing some spiritual practices. That's my assumption, which is not true, of course. So that number is very few in this world. Mostly in this world, people are, they are addicted towards materialistic pleasure. They are just going on searching for materialistic pleasure without having any concept of uh, the divine. So therefore, if you find somebody like that, then they are like a rare gem. So always stay in touch with them. They may be your equals. They may be junior to you or they may be senior to you by age or by spiritual progress or by seniority. Seniority means suppose you came uh, to an organization in 2012 and that person is there since 2001, 11 years senior to you. That person may be more experienced than you. So uh, whenever you find that I am able to uh, find somebody who is also inquiring about higher truths in life. Always go to them, take their association, learn from them, and if required, enlighten them also with your experiences. That is how you will uh, actually, we will actually uh, enhance this uh, Jupiter's transit into Aquarius. And Aquarius is a very revolutionary sign. Because it is also the sign which is co-ruled by Rahu along with Saturn. And Rahu uh, is this planet which does unusual things, you know, out of the box sometimes. So you may not be going to, because of this pandemic, you may not be going to a place where there are 50 million people uh, coming. But you can, uh, you, you can have phone calls, you can have Zoom sessions, you can, you, know, you, you can do things online, you can do it within your community. You don't need 60 million people, you just need four or five. <laughs> mm -hmm. You know, four or five good friends, they are enough. If you have not even five in Kaliuga these days, if you have one person, <laughs> that is like a very great blessing. If you have that, then don't lose them and cherish them and pray to God that your relationship continues and you get more people and you inspire others and they also can be inspired by your journey. That's what we should do, I think. <laughs> Wonderful. Thank you. Thank you so, so, so much. And through this video, I'm sure many people are going to already be inspired talk, talking about inspiration. So once again, I'd like to thank you for your time and for sharing all your insights, your knowledge um, and the inspiration again. And to everybody watching this, please don't forget to subscribe to Exotic Astrology <laughs> and to my channel as well. And uh, do leave us a like, a comment if you have any questions and we'll be happy to get back to you. And um, hoping to do more videos like this. So please stay, um, stay in tune, stay in tune with uh, both the channels and uh, stay connected. Thank you again. And, Thank, you, uh, Thank you so much. It's a, it was a great pleasure talking to you. Thank you. Hope to uh, record soon again. Thank you. Yes, absolutely. Thank you very much.